I'm Matt Harris. And I'm Mark Harris. We've lived in Hollywood our entire lives and know there are a ton of amazing things here to make you say wow. And we love the wow factor. And it's a big world out there. It's an amazing world filled with things that make you say wow. So come join us on our journey. Because we're on the hunt for the wow factor. Welcome, Welcome to, to our world of wow. So here we are exploring Los Angeles. Wait, I thought we were going to venture out into the world. We are, but we're starting here in our hometown. Oh, good idea, because people think Los Angeles is nothing but a concrete sprawl with no wow factor. Well, it is a concrete sprawl, but there are really amazing places to see here. Especially in the way of architecture. Yep. Some places you might have seen, others are hidden gems. Well, let's get on the bus. It's leaving right now. Yep, let's go. We're here at Randy's Donuts in Inglewood, California. Randy's Donuts is an iconic landmark in the city of Inglewood. It's been here since 1953, and we're here with one of the co-owners, Larry Weintraub. We've been actually been here for uh, 36 years. Okay. So my brother and I purchased it from the second owner. Okay. Back in 78. Now, this donut is iconic in Los Angeles. I mean, yes, you see is. that donut, you know this is the place to go for a donut. Absolutely. And I, I got to tell you something, Larry. I'm a native of Los Angeles. We're both natives, Larry. We're lived here natives. all our life, of course. I, I, I've been here my whole life. And we have never been to Randy's Donuts. What, what makes Randy's Donuts different than uh, Joe's Donuts or Bob's Donuts? The donuts are good. Good point. I like. I mean, I like a good donut. Who doesn't I mean, like a good donut? We love a good donut. What is your 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 number one specialty donut here? Uh, well, the number one selling donut is a glazed donut. Uh, I guess that's standard, right? My, everybody, my likes favorite, everybody likes the glazed donuts. Yeah. My favorite is apple fritters and buttermilks. Now, wow. are you actually in there baking these yourself? No, we have people that do that. You're just running the show. My brother and I make uh, muffins, brownies, cookies. Cookies. Cookies and brownies at Randy's Donuts. And, and, Randy's, and muffins, yes. And muffins, like muffin. yes. Hey, Randy, do you know, can you share with us anything about the architecture about this place? I know that there's something called mimetic. That means that the building mimic, mimics what the item is. Okay. What they're selling in the store. Hence, hence the giant donut then, right? Yes. I mean, it mimics the, your product, which is the donuts. Right. Okay. Now, what happened to Randy? Oh, he, they sold it to, uh, they sold it to us. And you guys decided to keep Randy? Yes. Well, I could Good idea. Yeah. Right. It yep. was, uh, <laughs> yes, that was a No need idea. to change it to, to it two cost names too, up Besides there. that, it cost too much money to change <laughs> to the change, name. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have, I would assume you've got a lot of regulars that keep coming here, Larry? Yes. A lot of times, um, a lot of people have come every single day for the same donut or the same and coffee every day so they and could actually come up to the window and say hey larry give us the usual yes they do put it on my I cab mean, sometimes <laughs> sometimes they even we even have it ready for them when they get there. no kidding yes and do you have any clients that have been here coming for 20 years or 30 yes. years yes wow yes. no kidding yeah. and you have your daily customers too these right. that come every day right and, since and we're in this area there's yeah. a, a lot of people going back and forth to the airport uh well, since we are close a couple minutes away from the airport and uh, there's a big industrial complex around there. Let me ask you this, seeing we're on the outskirts of Hollywood, do you have any celebrity clientele that make a visit to your yeah, location? I, yes we do, but if I told you, I, they'd kill me. I, you know, <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say that. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Do you, inside you have like uh, eight by ten pictures of, of celebrities that have attended the... Occasionally, yes. Occasionally. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Any talk about expanding, franchise, other cities? No, we're getting too old for that. Getting too old for that. Right. Sounds like the Randy's name and the giant donut can go a long way around yeah. the state. Absolutely. Yeah. I got to ask, has anybody offered to buy the donut? Not the, not the, the bakery, the donut shop, the donut, uh, for whatever reason. Nobody, no. Not I, yet. I mean, the, the kids come in and say they want the one on the roof. Yeah. You know, but oh, boy. That's about it. Jokers. What about right. historic status? Has the city of Inglewood deemed you any type of historic status yet? Uh, well, I I believe we are in the city of Inglewood, okay. some kind of a historic, a historic monument. Okay. We got a nice parking. On our 60th birthday, we got a nice uh, proclamation from okay. the mayor. Okay. Uh, and it was really, it was really nice. Got to get those proclamations. Yeah. Right. Got to get those proclamations. Here's another question for you. Again, being in the city of, uh, right outside of Hollywood, any movies filmed here? Oh TV yeah, shows? a lot of movies, a lot TV of movies. shows. Yes. Cheap Beats. Cheap Beats. Oh, Cheap Oh, okay. Cheap Beats on uh, the Food Network. Right. Uh, okay. Have you seen that? Yeah, I have. Uh, Not that particular in, uh, episode, but yes. Did you see her in the movie Earth Girls Are Easy? Earth Girls Are Easy. I've heard of that one. I think it won an Oscar. I think you might be right, Bart. Wrong. Uh, let me see. Or at least nominated. Yeah. 
in some category. It's got to have some nominations out Earth there. Earth Girls are easy. Uh, let me see. The, uh, the Golden Child. Oh, yeah, Eddie Murphy. Murphy. With Eddie Murphy. Yeah, okay. there, was a guy in the, there was a guy in the roof up yeah. there. Uh, Problem Child 2. Okay. Uh, Mars Attack. Mars Attack, uh, okay. It was in all these... Uh, uh, hey, wasn't it one, some, one movie where the, the actual donut rolled off and yes. it rolled off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that might have been Mars Attacks. Oh, no. It was, uh, did you see uh, uh, Iron Man 2? Yeah. yeah. The, Iron Man was in the middle of the donut. Okay. We that's, were that's in, right. uh, that that's was 2012. Okay. Where the donut rolled down the street. Okay. Um, Anything on tap for 2014 or 2015? I'm sure there is, yes, yeah. but I'm not sure exactly what. I guess we'll have to I'm hoping your, that there your, is. Your press liaison for, <laughs> for, to answer those questions. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that, that sounds all exciting. But I tell you, I'm just dying to get in there and try one of these donuts. I'm, I'm right there with you, Mark. Let's go. We're here in Hollywood at the world-famous Cinerama Dome Theater. Built in 1963 with a new technology called Cinerama. Basically, what Cinerama was, was three projectors projecting the film on the screen, which gave you that Cinerama view, which was, at the time, uh, it was all new, it was all new, 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 technology. new technology. And it was, it built in 1963 and held the world premiere for It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, all-star cast film with Jimmy Durante, Milton Berle, Mickey Rooney, you name it, they were in it back in 1963. When the theater opened in 1963, the, the goal was to have 600 Cinerama theaters around the world. Well, as we know, it didn't work out. It lasted about a year. They, they opened up another one on Hollywood Boulevard. That one closed down after 10 months. So actually, the technology, I guess, wasn't working. Out of the 600, they had two. So I because two is better than nothing. But yet, this one still exists after 50 years. This one still years. exists, a big hit. Always love coming on to Hollywood to see a film here, or a movie, however you want to choose it, but it's a great place to see a movie. Uh, other movies that did debut here, in 1979, the Steven Spielberg film, 1941. And believe it or not, we were actually here for that red carpet event, which was crazy. Not 1941. But we 1979. 1979. Confusing with all these years. Right, right. So, I mean, when you, when, when you go and say everything about the Cinerama Dome, it's a techno... It's, it's, it's an Tech, architectural, architectural wonder. I mean, look at the thing. It's, it's, it's a fantastic place. And one of, one of the one of the Shrek movies actually uh, had their world premiere here too, where they, they painted the entire Cinerama Dome Shrek, Shrek green. green, plus they put up the, uh, the, the Shrek, Shrek ears. ears. So Shrek the Cinerama green, Dome Shrek is ears. an architectural wonder and another fantastic piece of history in Hollywood. Hi, we're still here in Hollywood as the architectural tour continues. Located now, we're at the corner of Hollywood and Vine, or actually half a street up, from, half a block right. up from Hollywood Vine, at the world famous Capitol Records building. On the world famous Hollywood, Hollywood Walk, Walk of Fame. fame. Right. Everything's Hollywood's so it's, world it's famous. the world famous Hollywood Walk of Fame in front of the world famous Capitol Records building. Built in 1956. Right. As some would say, the home that Nat built, referring to Nat King Cole. Right. Also the home of Frank Sinatra and the Beatles. The Beatles. Right. Now, this building was built in 1956. Now, it looks like a stack of records. I think it was loosely built on that description. People said, coincidentally, it was built to look like a stack of 45s. Right. 13 stories tall, and at the time, there was a 150-foot limit of building in, in Hollywood. Yeah. Well, naturally, since then, the height restrictions have changed. But as you can see, it's an architectural wonder. The place looks fantastic. Fantastic. And all the way at the top of the... the beacon. There, right, the beacon. At the top of the Capitol Records Something building... Something special about the beacon. In Morse code, it flashes the word Hollywood constantly at nighttime, flashing red light, Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood. And if you don't know what it means, you don't know what it means. It just looks like a cool beacon, beaconing. Yeah. Right. I like so, it. I mean, it, it's a great building. It's been here since 56. Capitol Records is still based here. And a lot of the big deals are still cut here. It's always a big deal going down here at Capitol Records in Hollywood, California. The heart of Hollywood. The heart of Hollywood on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. We're in downtown Los Angeles at the Disney Concert Hall, which is an extension of the Los Angeles Music Center. Music which Center. Consists of the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, the Mark Taper Forum, and the Amundsen. Right. The Disney Hall has been here since 2003, so they just celebrated their 10th anniversary. Built at the cost of 130 million dollars, it is the home of the Los Angeles Philharmonic, and designed by world famous architect Frank Gehry which is an incredible structure. I mean, when you look at this thing, it's unbelievable. Fantastic. Right? Now, the building was, uh, again, it was built at the cost of $130 million with an initial $50 million donation from Walt Disney widow, Lillian Disney. And the rest of the funding came from? I don't know where the rest of the funding came from. <laughs> but it's one heck of a building. I mean, look at this place, right? Look at this thing. It looks like it belongs in the science fiction movie. It sure does. It looks like it's shaved ice or something. Either way, great place to go to see any type of a concert from the Philharmonic to Tony Bennett to, to uh, 
Blue Chili Band Peppers, Group. Blue Band Group. <laughs> the Disney Concert Hall. We're here at the Ramon C. Cortinas School of Visual and Performing Arts in downtown Los Angeles. And built at a cost of $250 million, it's the most expensive school in the country. For that matter, there's a lot of controversy surrounding the, the school because of the cost. I can understand that. You know, in this day and age, there's so many other places you could put $250 million to commit that kind of money to one school. In addition to the cost of this high school, a lot of the controversy is the design. It isn't your standard, straightforward high school. It's got a lot of twiddly-doos and round chapel things. It's, and it's got a somewhat modern look about it as well. People drive by in the Hollywood freeway, they see it off the freeway, they don't even know what this thing no is. have no idea what it is. I, I myself have driven by many, many times yep. and had no idea what this place was. I mean, we're down mid-center, mid-city, right? Right. Okay. Right, out, right out of Chinatown. Yeah. A school that's gone this far over budget must not have an accounting class. You gotta wonder. We're in beautiful Sun Valley, California at the Villa Rotunda, which is also called the Round House. We're here with the owner, Jim Abney. Now, Jim's owned the house since 1986. Now, Jim, you know, this is a little bit of an unusual house. I'm just curious, what possessed you, or what brought you, what, what interests you in this type of a house? Well, we've been going by, and we always admired the house. It has a very interesting Mediterranean architecture, and as you can see, it's definitely unique. Um, so, I was born in Beirut, Lebanon, and it kind of reminded me of, uh, of the, the architecture back at home, and uh, we just absolutely love the, the look of it and, and the fact that it was different. Is it difficult living in a house that's round? I mean, <laughs> the rooms are different than your traditional. Are they smaller? Well, actually, uh, no, it, it actually has quite a bit of room for the inside. It's a two-story house, so we have three bedrooms up on the, uh, the upper floor. Mm -hmm. uh, on the bottom, we have a living room, uh, a formal dining room, and a kitchen. And Actually, contrary to popular belief, it's actually easy to furnish because you don't have that many flat walls where you have to put furniture. So, mm -hmm. uh, what's the square footage, Jim? What's the square footage? You know, or, it's or a, round footage. What's the round footage? <laughs> the round footage, I believe, it's about uh, 1,400 square feet. 1,400 round feet. Uh, Jim, or 1,400 round feet. 1,400 round feet. <laughs> Jim, we're located pretty much out in the middle of nowhere, as you can as you can see around here. So I'm curious. I mean, come, literally out in the middle yeah, of nowhere here. So, right. so come Halloween time, what goes on here? <laughs> what goes on here at uh, the Round House at Halloween? Well, it's kind of spooky out here, really, because uh, we're out here in horse country, yeah. and uh, sometimes they come up on horses and demand candy, and yeah. it's uh, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm not seeing any street lights, so I would assume in the pretty middle dark. of the country here, it's it's like it's very dark. It's you're black. you're really you're really out in the middle of nowhere out here. You ever hear any eerie sounds from some of these coyotes? Out here? How about coyotes? We well, have coyotes. Yeah. We have rattlesnakes. Bears? We have deer. Got bears up here. Does it Never. get extra creepy up here if you got a full moon out? Yes, absolutely. You got the full moon, you got the wolf barking, and suddenly there's a knock at the door in the middle of the night. <laughs> I see you've got these knockers on the door over That's here, right. and these, these lines up at the top. They there. look kind of creepy, look That's like it's it. out of the Wolfman or something. <laughs> you know, or, or this, kind of Versace esque. This looks like it could really be like a prop in a movie. Have you ever gotten a request to be in, in movies and TV shows? No, we've, we haven't had that, but we do have a lot of people who come up, knock on the door, and yeah. they, they want to see the inside. Really? Well, I tell you what, uh, well, hopefully, you you're not letting them in. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I tell you, Jim, if you don't have a, an agent for this house, uh, we'll step in because I could see a lot of promise for this house being in the movies and television. How about a Facebook page and or Twitter. a Twitter page? Any yes. social media for yes. the house? Uh, well, you it, gotta have it, social media. there are a lot of pictures of the house on the Internet. If you okay. look on the Internet, you do see a lot of pictures of the house. Uh, so, Jim, uh, when exactly was the house built and when did you move in? It was built in 1939. 1939. Moved in 1986. 1986. Boy, I can imagine 1939, there must have been nothing around here. As it seems right now, it doesn't seem like there's a lot around here. Uh, except for a lot of cars driving by. Actually, there were some homes on the other side of uh, this canyon over here, um, quite a few homes, and they all had to be removed because the city thought that this area was going to flood. Uh -huh. So you can still see foundations over there and um, remnants of, of old homes that used to be here. Wow. Do you have any desire to sell the roundhouse, Jim? No, not at all. This is this is country living in its finest. So you're in for the long haul? The long haul. All right. Yeah. Well, I love the roundhouse. It's unique. It's different. And, uh, I mean, I, again, i got to say, I see a promising future in the Roundhouse in movies and uh, TV. I agree. Yeah. I agree. The well, Roundhouse, Villa Rotunda. <laughs> well, Jim, thank you so much for taking the time thank to show the, uh, the Roundhouse. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Jim, pleasure. We really pleasure. appreciate it. We love, uh, love your project.
property. Yeah, Thank it's you a very fine much. addition to Los Angeles County and the city of Sun Valley. Thanks for being here with us today. Thank you. Well, here we are in Koreatown. As you can tell, I have a Korean newspaper here. Could you read any of this? I could barely read a regular newspaper. In any event, here in Koreatown, one of the most unusual architectural finds here in Southern California, a little Koreatown. Cafe Jack. Cafe Jacks. Yeah. And it is designed to look like the Titanic. Right. Now look at this thing, right? Now this is a restaurant. Built in 2006, Jack Chin. Captain Jack Chin. Captain Jack Sounds Chin. Sounds like a Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Captain Jack Chin. Jack was such a huge fan of the movie Titanic, he built a restaurant to look like the Titanic. And I mean, his name is after... Which Jack is Dawson. Like Jack Dawson, yeah. which was Leonardo DiCaprio's role in the movie Titanic. Now, the owner, Jack Chin, actually built the restaurant himself. He didn't go and seek outside contractors or builders to build this thing. This guy built this thing from scratch himself with his own two hands. That's crazy. And on the inside, they have all kind of memorabilia, 8x10 photos, posters of the movie. Now, Jack Chin evidently had a huge love for the movie if he's going out and he's actually building this restaurant. Now, we're here in Koreatown, so inside the restaurant, can I get seafood or am I going to get Korean food? That's a good question. I think you're probably going to get a little bit of both. Well, I'm ready for some Korean food. If you want some Korean food right now, let's go get some lunch. I love it. All right, Cafe, Cafe Jacks. Jacks. We're in downtown Los Angeles in front of the Coca-Cola Bottling Headquarters. Continuing our nautical theme of architecture in Los Angeles with the movement and motion, I guess, revolution of the 30s, yep. built in 1939 to resemble an ocean liner, complete with catwalks, and uh, what do you call those windows? Uh, portholes? Portholes, that's yeah. right, portholes. Uh, did I say this was built in 1939? I think you did, but it was by architect Robert Dara, yeah. uh, who was one of the biggest architects. architects in that time. Right. I don't know about you, but I sure can go for an ice cold bottle of Coca-Cola. Yeah, you don't get that very often, but I could go for one as well. Let's go get one. Yeah. Now that's one big bottle of Coca-Cola. It sure is, and I gotta wonder, I wonder what the deposit is on a bottle that size, right? Nice. We're at the last stop of our architectural tour in Hollywood at the world famous Grimm's Chinese Theater. That's right, Grimm's Chinese. Though you may know it as, as the TCL, currently TCL. it's the TCL Chinese Theater. We'll forever remember it as Grimm's <laughs> Chinese, and since then it's been the, the Ted uh, Man. It was a Ted Man Chinese Theater, and then back to Grimm's Chinese Theater, which is where we're at right now. Built in 1927, this is an architectural icon here in Hollywood and around the world. And the theater it runs adjacent to the Hollywood Walk of Fame with all the Hollywood stars. And in addition to the, the Walk of Fame, we are known for the handprints and footprints for some of the biggest names in the entertainment industry. Going back to Be Betty Davis, Clark Gable, John Wayne. To Warren Beatty, Bruce Willis, Tom Johnny Cruise. Depp, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and all the new ones. Yeah, including Tom Cruise. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it, it is a staple in the industry, a staple for all the, the tourists in Hollywood. Again, built in 1927. Yeah. And the sister theater yeah. to the Egyptian theater from down the road. Yeah. An architectural find. I don't know about you, but I'm going to go in and catch a movie. How about some popcorn? Let's go. Should we check out some of these uh, handprints too? I'd love to. Okay. All right. Here we've got the footprints and handprints of tiny Shirley Temple. She was only eight years old when she did this in 1935. Shirley Temple, we we uh, we sorely miss you. I mean, she passed away just recently, but after she left the industry, she went on to become uh, an ambassador to Mexico and uh, the Czech Republic. Look at those little handprints, will you? Shirley Temple. Saturday Night Fever's John Travolta. Then he went out to Greece, Urban Cowboy, and bigger and badder movies, right? Biggest star in the late uh, 70s. Whoopi Goldberg. Academy Award winner. And also star of ABC's The View. Hey, look at that. Her dreadlocks are in there. Wow. It's Iron Man's Robert Downey Jr. And Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, that's right. Look at the size of those feet. World famous director Steven Spielberg and uh, George Lucas. May the force be with you. Speaking of which, over here we've got Harrison Ford. You know him from Raiders of the Lost Ark and Star Wars. Look at the size of his feet, too. Everybody wears a 15 size shoe around here. Crazy. Okay, here we go to Clint Eastwood. Go ahead, make okay. my day. Hey, punk. And we got Morgan Freeman, another Oscar winner, Morgan Freeman. Hello, Morgan. And we all know world famous Tom Cruise. Hello, Tom. And finally, from the Oceans movies, an Oscar winner, George Clooney. Brad Pitt. 
He didn't sign his name, just a BP. How about that? I guess if you're Brad Pitt, you don't have to sign your name. And followed by his co-star, Matt Damon. Wow, looks like he's wearing construction shoes there. Wow. Well, that's a wrap here at Grandma's Chinese Theater. Thanks for watching us. There's just too many handprints and footprints to show you. And all we can say now is, wow.